Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I really love this day when we celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. This may not be the actual day that Jesus rose from the dead, but I love uh, celebrating that because it's just, it's the only thing that makes life worth worth living, really. So happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter for those of you who call it Easter. Um, just, just, it's a wonderful day to celebrate the Lord and what he did. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Touch every heart, every mind, every soul, every spirit with your word, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. On about, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, the Lord um, brought to my mind uh, the song, Let It Be. And he was like, I want you to preach a sermon called Let It Be. So, I, that's the title of t- today's sermon. I still can't put it up on YouTube, but when I can, I will upload all the sermons all at one time on YouTube. Um, it's not that I've forgotten about you, it's just that I can't log into my, uh, YouTube, uh, without another person. So I will do that as soon as I can. Um, so, as I, as I thought about, um, the Lord and, uh, the resurrection and the cross, I thought about uh, what he did, and um, I said, I got very reflective, and I know the cross is a good thing because um, he died for our sins. He died so we didn't have to, and um, everything like that. But um, all he said, I said, did you know, I was talking to the Lord and said, did you know that you were going, like, you were going to die, go through all that, and go through the resurrection and all that scorn and all that ridicule and everything like that? And more, I I would say, uh, more than half the world doesn't even believe you exist or they call you uh, the universe, um, which is not you. It's something you created. It's the created thing because it's more spiritually friendly. Um, Did you know all that before you decided to die? And he said, yes. He said, yes, I did know all that. And he said, Rachel, examine the last thing I said before I closed my eyes on the cross. I said, it is finished. So um, I said, it is finished. And he said, I knew that more than half the world would not believe me either because of other faith dreams or would believe in me, but would not believe that I was the son of God. He said, I knew all that, and I did it anyway. And I asked, why? He said, well, I did it because my love is so vast for you and for the whole entire world. My heart is so big for the world I created. So that's why I did it. Even though um, 
even though I knew that most of the world now wouldn't even believe, um, would have some form of belief in me, but they wouldn't believe in me totally. I did it because I loved them. And he said, sometimes you just have to let it be. Sometimes uh, people are going to believe what they believe, and people are going to do what they're going to do, and life's going to do what it's going to do. And sometimes you just have to let it be. So, um, he said, the key to life is knowing knowing what the times and seasons are, discerning for yourself what the times and seasons are. There's, like Ecclesiastes said, there's a time to every purpose under heaven. Um, sometimes there's a time to fight, and sometimes there's a time to let it be. There's a time to speak up, and there's a time to be quiet. quiet. And there, the key to life is knowing what the time and seasons are for your life. Um, have you ever heard a preacher say, now's the time to uh, do whatever, or now's the time to push, or now's the time to whatever, now's the time to whatever, to do this thing or turn around and do this thing or that thing. They're not wrong, but when you're preaching, it's not for everybody to whom you're speaking. The message is is for everybody, but it's not for everybody at the same time. So it's not that that thing whatever they're saying is not uh, for your life or it's not true, it's just not your your time or your season to do that thing. But there are people in the congregation that God is speaking to that it is the time to do that thing. So it's not the fact that it's wrong. It's just that time it's not your season for that yet. And the key with God is to discern what time and season it is for you. And um, I think when you learn to um, be the sons of uh, how, uh, when you learn to incline your ear to what God is saying for your life, and when you understand how God works in you and for you and through you, it makes life a lot easier. And you may not understand it all the way because he doesn't want you to. But if you can understand how God speaks to you and how he works in you and the tools he uses for you, your life is going to be so much, not easier, but it's going to be easier to understand how to move, when to move, when he's speaking, when it's you. And all of that takes time. It doesn't just happen. To be in tune uh, with your spirit man, because your spirit man is who God speaks to, takes a lot of time and a lot of practice, and you will make mistakes. And the Lord said, you know, in all those mistakes, I need you to just know that I'm with you. And um, sometimes you're fighting so hard, you're like, Lord, what 
What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do when you're stressing out and you're stressing out? You're uh, reading how to hear the voice of God, how to have a better prayer life, how to do this and do that. And all he's saying to you right now is let it be. Be still and listen. He's like, you don't He's like, you don't need any tool. You don't need those tools or whatever. Those tools and books and stuff are great. But he's like, the first thing I need you to do is listen. Listen for what I'm telling you to do. And if you're not sure... Just keep going. And if you make mistakes, that's okay. I'm. He's saying, I'm right here. He's saying, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're not me. I'm infinite, but you're human. And don't be afraid to be human. And as you walk, with the Lord, you'll learn more. As you spend, as you spend time with the Lord, you you will learn more. And a lot of people, like a lot of people, in their relationship with the Lord, expect to get it right away. Expect to hear God right away. Expect that God speaks the same way. Oh, all you need to do is open your Bible and she's speaking to you. And not for everybody. Well, he is speaking to you through the written word of the Bible, of course. But that may not be the primary way that he speaks for everybody. Like, for me... The primary way he speaks to me is through music and through art. Um, Yes, I have the foundation of the word because I've been reading it for years. But the primary way he speaks to me for a sermon is basically through music or it could be through a movie. And that took time to learn that. I don't think we we um, teach people enough about the time it takes to build a relationship with the Lord. A relationship with the Lord doesn't just happen. It takes time. It takes intention. You like you build any relationship like you can have a base with a relationship with your sisters or brothers or friends or whatever but if you don't take time to build it it will never grow strong and that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to get people to see is to really understand how God speaks to them and what, like, how they can hear his voice for their lives and how they can discern his will. And it is different for everybody. It is different for everybody. And he's saying, don't be afraid of it. He's saying, just let it be. He's saying, just just relax. You'll get there when you're just, when it's my time for you to get there. You'll slow down when it's time for you to slow down and you'll speed up. And if I need to jump in and say, turn the other way, I will. And if I will send the resources that you need to that'll work for 
for your life. Of course, there are things that God wants everybody to do, but today I'm talking about um, how to just flow with God and understand that he doesn't speak to everybody the same way. Um, He may use some of the same methods to speak to uh, certain people, but he's very individual how he speaks to people, I find. Uh, Judging from your personality and judging from uh, what what he knows about you, because um, the one thing about the Lord is he knows you fully and completely. And that's because that's how he knows how to speak to you, because he just knows what you need and how you need to receive things, how you need to, um, uh, how you need things given for you, because because we're all different. Like, I remember in school, um, I needed things blown up bigger because I couldn't see the things in the book. So what did my uh, teaching assistant do? She, she went to the photocopy and blew up things bigger because she knew I needed that to understand things. So although the material was the same, I needed it delivered differently. The material in the Bible is the same for everybody. But God's delivery may be different uh, depending on your personality. And depending on how you need to take things, I'm not saying like it's um it's a what is that uh it's like a mandarin or a all you can eat buffet where you pick and choose what you want. No, no, no. This is not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that the God's word what's in the Bible is the same for everybody, but how it is delivered and walked out is different. Your journey in this Christian life is not going to be the same as my journey, and my journey is not going to be the same as your journey. And you are uniquely you, and I am uniquely me. What I need to highlight in my journey is not what you need to highlight in your journey. What I struggle with is not what you will struggle with. And the Lord, the Lord is saying, just let it be. Don't, don't try and get places that you are not prepared for because you see another person can get to those places. I need you to understand your place in the kingdom because every place in the kingdom of God is significant. I'll say that again. Every place in the kingdom of God is significant. And we need to understand that every place is significant. The Lord, the Lord is not daunted where he, where he has certain levels uh, to life, or the Lord is not um, a university. You know, you have your lower level, you have your lower level, which is your bachelor or undergrad, and then you have your master's, 
and then you have your PhD. God is not like that. For God, the playing field is level for everyone, but the delivery is different. I've always said um, um, when it comes to the school system, um, the material should be the same, but how, how the materials taught should vary from student to, to student. They should have uh, different kinds of classes for students to learn because everybody learns differently. Some people need more artistic learning. Some people can handle uh, the, the traditional book learning. Some people need to get up and, and learn. And some people can sit in desk and learn. I think when you when 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 you can tailor a a few different a, a few different classes to kids' needs and not just lump all children or high schoolers into the same basket and say this is the level you need to be reading at this age, or this is the level, this is how you need to learn at this age. I think you'll see more students just walking in their purpose, following their purpose, doing their, uh, be, doing their thing and being much happier and more successful in their careers because I think part of the problem is we lump everybody in the same kind of thing at school. Um, And if a person doesn't fit, we have these labels for them, like we have certain labels for them and we have different things for them where, where we just don't, well, we should just say that's them. That's how they learn. I think even the same thing in university too, because some people um, they c- can't do the book learning thing well, but show them how to do the job, and they'll be a dynamo. You know. Um, show them the nuts and bolts of the job or give them the project and they'll be a dynamo. But I think in the world, we don't make room for difference. In the church, we don't make room for difference either. Um, Like, we think there's only one style generally we think there's only one style of preaching, one style of worshiping, or maybe two styles of of worship, and we don't make room for difference. And I think if we made room for difference, that's where people would flow. It would come come alive in their flow. If we said, said, you know what? If if you like cats and dogs and want to use that in your sermon, your love for cats and dogs or your love for fishing or uh, your love for the arts and music, not in worship per se, but in a sermon or if you if you like to move around and you don't like to stand behind a podium and you want to preach when you're in the audience. Hey, that's cool. You know, if you want to 
um, put together a story um, to illustrate what you mean. Like, you know, I think we need to make room uh, for people to be different. And I think we need to just let people be how they are and just celebrate different people how they are, you know? Just make room for everybody at the table because everybody is significant. And that if we can understand that that difference is not a bad thing. Difference is just different, and we need to incorporate the differences in people. Um, Because the Lord never turned away anyone, and he just welcomed everyone. He didn't agree with everyone. But he welcomed everyone, and we could welcome people that we don't agree with, you know, because one drop of the blood of Jesus will change their life. So, but if we lock them out and say, no, not here, they'll never get that blood of Jesus. They'll never get that, that that sweet savior that we love and that we know and that we honor and that we cherish and that we celebrate on days like today will never they'll never experience that and i i for one believe that the lord the lord created us the lord created us all differently and we need to um, be open to differences because when you're open to differences, the whole world opens up to you. So if, if I have this idea and you have another idea, our differences can can pull together and we can work together to create something wonderful. Um, Because that's how babies are made, really. Because the differences in a man and the differences in a woman come together to create something new. And as that child grows, they they in in the marriage of a mother and father in the home of a mother and father that person begins to get some something from their mother and something from their father and it creates a human being that is just wonderful that's god's original intention and I think I think we stay with what's the same or what's what we call as normal because we're afraid to step out of the box. And the Lord is saying, don't be afraid of what's different about you. Embrace it. Don't be afraid of your weirdness. Embrace it. Don't be afraid to stand up and stand out. That's what makes you uniquely you. And the world needs you. God created you exactly the way you needed to be. And he created you beautiful and perfect exactly the way he he needed you to be. and that's that's okay. Because I think when we embrace different different strengths or different abilities, we can we can have a better world because you you contribute something and I contribute something. 
um, and then we'll together we'll create something new. We'll create something fabulous. And I think that's what the world is missing. Like the um, the the world says that we need to all be the same. We need to all fit in this different box. But we create something more, create something more wonderful if if uh, the blacks got together with the spit with the Latinos and the Latinos got together with the Chinese and the Chinese got together with the whites and we were just all together. It would just be awesome because your culture brings something different than my culture or your speci- specific uh, denomination brings something different than my denomination and it's wonderful um, I, I I love when different artists do things together because it's so awesome because from this style of music, you get this, and from that style of music, you get that. It It's phenomenal, and it creates something really great. Oh, my God. I would, lo- I would love to see that happen more in the church, that it's not black music or white music or gospel music or rock music. It's just music, and it's just, this wonderful new sound that 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 the styles brought together creates. Oh, that that would be awesome, and we would really we would really do do what the Lord says in John for what Jesus prayed in John for. Oh, that they may be one. I think it's John four. Um, that that his church may be one body because we are one body, and it talked about in first first Corinthians twelve that the that the arm is not the foot, and like every part of the body. Uh performs a different function but the body needs all of those all of those parts to survive um all those parts do different things and if one part is broken uh the body's off so we need all those parts in our communities in our churches in our schools we need the creative part. We need the business part. We need all those parts to survive together. And no part is greater than the other. They're, they're just different. And together, they create a, a greater whole. Um, my former pastor used to say, a family is... Um, people working together for the good of the whole. And I think I think if we bring my gift and your gift together, we can make something awesome. And I think if the school system brings creative people and business people together and creates something creates create something wonderful where both the creative people and the uh, uh, and the um, academic learning people can can learn together it's going to be wonderful And both people will be 
will be walking in their purpose. Will walk with competent and actually learn things in their schools and, you know, come, come out successful and be successful in their lives. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose the victor of the dark domain, and he lived. Forever with the stains to rain. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. He arose. He arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose, the victor of the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Oh, Christ arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. When I find myself in times of trouble, the Lord Jesus comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, oh, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be, let it be, there will be an answer, let it be. Okay, guys, see you next week. Bye. Oh, let it be, just let it be. Let it be, oh, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. When I find myself in times of trouble, the Lord Jesus comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, oh, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be, let it be, there will be an answer. Let it be. The Lord is saying that to someone. He's saying the battle is not is not yours. It's mine. Um. Uh, Yolanda Adams, I believe, um, 
had a song that said, the battle's not mine, it's the Lord's. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, there's there's someone out there that is fighting and you're fighting and you're fighting. And he's saying, let it be. Now is your time to let it be. Remember I said sometimes in preaching, uh, you're, you're talking to sub- somebody. I'm talking to somebody right now and he's saying, let it be. You've been fighting too hard. You've been trying to break down doors yourself. He's like, let me carry that weight. He's saying, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. Oh, let it be, just let it be. Oh, let it be, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye. When I find myself in times of trouble, the Lord Jesus comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Just let it be. There will be an answer. Let it be.